Welcome. Welcome to the Net of Light online teaching. I'm Sharon Macerlane. I'm here in uh, Petaluma in Northern California. Today I was exiled from the house because we have house guests. So I'm out in the studio with the paintings. Um, with me today is Sinead from Ireland and Snow from Lithuania, now from England, uh, Catherine uh, from Northern California, a neighbor of mine who has traveled and in Ukraine and opened a women's center there in the 90s. We're gonna be here today and all that we're focusing on today, all we're focusing on is peace, peace on earth, uh, good goodwill, love, between all beings, especially focusing all this love in Eastern Europe to benefit all, all parties, all players in this drama now. So we ask that you, you hold the, light, the net of light steady for all beings as we work together. And I'm gonna ask Sinead to come in now and lead us in the net of light meditation. Thank you, Sharon. So let's just begin by taking some deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as we do this, we, bask, we bask into the glory and love of our hearts. We feel and breathe into this strength the love, the wisdom, grounding, and the peace that resides deep within us. Keeping the breath slow and deep, we call and the mighty presence of the grandmothers. We call on the mighty presence of our ancestors. We call on the presence of the elementals to join with us this evening, today, as we join forces to revitalize and strengthen the great net of light that encircles this great earth. And we move. We move and we begin by bringing our hearts, our awareness, our intention to those parts of Eastern Europe, Ukraine and Russia as tides of challenge and fear and tremor work through those places and in the hearts and minds of all those that reside there. We call the grandmothers in closer now And we feel the strengthening of the net of light. We feel its vibrancy, its power, its beauty. And we feel it move from our hearts and lifting upward and outward as it sails across the oceans. We move with it to those places that need that loving care. May they call on the grandmothers to hold this net tightly and with greater love, power and divine grace we cast the net of light in, through, and around 
the entirety of all circumstances, events, movements, change and turmoil that exists in the area of war. And we call it the net of light to strengthen and to imbue the greatest powers of love that we may resource and call forth from, from divinity. We call on the net of light and we cast it. We blanket entire countries, populations, touches every heart and mind and soul. We cast the net to every breathing, living thing. And we call forth that, that love through the net of light, empower and strengthen every heart that quivers, every heart that is in sadness, every heart that is in fear. We cast the net of light in, through, and around each of those peoples. Every animal, every bird, every sea creature. We ask the great mother earth to hold all of those living souls in the greatness of the net of light. We ask the net of light to be instilled and anchored deeply. Anchored deeply all the way down into the core of the earth so that the net of light flourishes, becomes more bountiful, the more intention and more awareness that we bring it grows in strength. And with it, each heart, each soul is given greater love to hold within them to see through these times. While we do this, we wrap the net of light, we call on it to move in through and around every country of this great world. Every heart, every being. We call on the net of light to be inside the breath of each and every being so that it is tangibly felt the love and the goodness. Love and goodness for all. Great grandmothers, be with us in our call. Experience whatever you're feeling and experiencing now and notice how your body feels as you drink in this essence of the net of light. And as you drink it in and you take it and say yes to it, because you're part of the net of light, this great yes, this great acceptance of light flows throughout the cosmos. Every strand in the net of light picks it up. And this gift of you receiving allows millions more to receive what they most need. Let that happen as you just quietly be the holder of light for so many. All the leaders of this world are now receiving. The leaders 
of all the countries involved here. Mr. Zelensky is receiving. Mr. Putin is receiving. Mr. Biden, Mr. Macron, all beings are receiving. Soaking in the light as a sponge that's been dried out and desiccated. Once it's placed in that liquid, soaks it up. So too, do we all soak in the light? Sinead laid down the net of light for us. We have it. And because we have it, all beings can receive it. So as we work together today, and maybe in the back of your mind, just be aware that millions are working with us. We are all part of the great one love, one heart. And I think first of all, uh, as we begin, this next part, I'm gonna ask Catherine, who is wearing, I asked her to please wear this wonderful headdress from the Ukraine. And, and she's wearing this blouse from the Ukraine as well. Catherine, if you would, yeah, <laughs> share with us some of what um, uh, you experienced in the Ukraine. You traveled there several times. And I know that in uh, 2017, you took, uh, the grandmother's work and passed on the empowerment to the Ukrainian women in a, a city there. So if you would share a little bit with us so that we have more understanding of this culture that's standing so strong now and is such a, a model of uh, power and resilience and goodness for the whole world. So speak to us a little bit, Catherine, about <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you, Sinead. Um, so, and, and I, I also want to acknowledge Snow, who has both Ukrainian and Russian heritage. Um, but I've been going to the Ukraine since uh, 1989, uh, when it was still the Soviet Union. And then in the early 1990s, um, I was invited to go with a group um, because I was living in Santa Rosa, California, Northern California. We have a sister city. Um, we started a sister city in Cherkasy, Ukraine, which is in the center of the country. And it's southeast of Kiev and on the Dnieper River, which is the heart of the country. It's like the Mississippi of, of, of Ukraine. And, um, and then out of this women's visit, and I took my six-month-old daughter, um, Maria, who I, I was uh, nursing, and her heritage, my children's heritage, is Ukrainian on their father's side. Um, so we met relatives there. Um, but anyway, out of the, the first women's visit from the sister city, um, blossomed a women's center in Cherkasy, um, a two bedroom flat um, where women would gather and we did, uh, we got funding for domestic violence programs, leadership programs, all kinds of things. But anyway, I've been, I've been there about 10 times in the last 30 some years. And um, traditionally Ukraine uh, had a, a deep affinity for the goddess, a very matriarchal culture. And there's still, and uh, mothers and grandmothers were very respected. And there's still a lot of those traditions, um, you know, hold true today. And, um, but in 1920 or 2017, as Sharon mentioned, I went to a grandmother's gathering in Lithuania. And some years earlier, when I went to my first gathering, I got the sense from the grandmothers that they wanted me to do some work in the U in Ukraine, um, some net of light work. And so anyway, I went to visit Lithuania 
2017 went to the gathering where they um, they gave each participant these crystal hearts, which um, the story is on the, the newsletter on netoflight.org right now. Um, and the hearts had originally come from California, from the women there. And then they went to Lithuania and where they were blessed in each place. And then when I went to Ukraine, um, I was asked to um, take the extras with me that were left over. And I wanted to do a small meeting there. And the, the people organizing the meeting said, oh, no one will come. But I remembered from the books and from the gathering, Sharon saying, you know, even if it's a, uh, even if it's a meeting of just one person, you know, how important that is to hold the net of light, hold it steady. And so, um, so anyway, so um, my friend kept saying, no one's coming, no one's coming. And I said, well, I will be there. I will be there. And previously we had driven to the west, Western Ukraine and I had done net of light work all along the way as, as I do. And, uh, but anyway, I got to Cherkasy and there were 22 women there that received the empowerment. And um, they all got these, um, you know, there were enough hearts, enough crystal hearts for, for each one. And these women are, you know, as, as Sharon said, they're just, they're so beautiful, they're resilient. They've, they've gone through, you know, in their generations, um, you know, communism, the Nazis, a forced famine, um, economic collapse. Um, some of the programs we did were to prevent women from being trafficked because um, they were being lured as nannies to European, you know, they thought they were going for jobs. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm, I'm so grateful that we were able to embed the net of light in Ukraine. And, um, you know, some of my friends are, you know, have fled to Poland. Others are in, you know, shelters in Kiev and Cherkasy. Um, others are in the villages, you know, some are staying, some are going. Um, and, uh, and I trust in the net of light and I trust in their resilience and, and um, I'm so grateful for all the work everyone has done worldwide to pray for them and, and uh, send them strength. Um, and the one thing Sharon wanted me to mention, um, I think was in the newsletter too, is that um, some of the older women, when war first broke out in 2015, um, you know, some of the younger women took supplies and they took in refugees and they brought food and clothing, but the older women knit tank covers as camouflage. Um, you know, they did that in this, you know, white ones in the snow. So the Russians couldn't see, you know, where the tanks were and, you know, camo colors, green and brown, you know, for the rest of the year. So I mean, these women, if nothing else, are they've they've seen hardship, and they and there's they're still full of joy, and you know, very spiritual women that love their traditions. And uh, um, so, anyway, thank you everyone for all you're doing for for Ukraine and its people. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just take a moment, <clears throat> let's all take a moment right now and feel the connection of our hearts with each other on this Zoom connection. And let's take a moment and feel the connection with all our grandmother's sisters and brothers around the world. Uh, people all over the world are linked in light now. Many, many great teachers, great beings are working to hold the one love steady. And we're part of that. 
experience this family of light that seeks the highest good for all and upholds that light. Okay, and now Snow, would you talk with us a little bit about um, what, what you know about this conflict and about uh, what, sh- what we're doing here, what the grandmothers are doing about it. Thank you, hello. Um, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I have families in Ukraine and Russia. I also have family in Lithuania. And I would like to talk a little bit about the experience that not just Russia and Ukraine are having, but countries who have traumatic memories about their past relationships with Russia. And Lithuania, for example, is uh, one of these places. Lithuania was the first country uh, to leave USSR and to declare their independence 30 years ago. At that time, I was 10 years old and I lived in Lithuania at that time. And I remember something was so sticky in the air when you were watching the news and this connection that immediately was felt between people, like a heavy silence was hanging and being a child, I could not really express it. So there was also talk to someone about it, but I remember this feeling in my body, it stayed with me. And what's been happening in the last few days uh, brought this up to the surface for myself and for many other people who do carry these memories. And it just happened that a few days ago, we did receive a letter from Lithuania where one of the members of Net of Light communities reached out asking for help. She expressed that it becomes harder to maintain a sense of peaceful groundedness because the war is not just happening in the countries, but is happening and being witnessed in between the people in the country where she lives in Lithuania. Uh, So she felt that by reaching out, they could get some extra support. And this is what I would like to talk about. We often think that uh, we don't really have an effect. We don't really have an influence on something and that we're too small. And all these years, the main message of the grandmothers was that we're so powerful. We just need to trust our hearts and we will be led into the next step. I really feel this is a great opportunity for all of us to go even deeper into the sense of unity that is emerging now for all of us. The web, the web of light where each of us is already lit up and seeing each other. You know, the distance between us is so little. Maybe years ago it was a larger gap, but now it's so lit up and we are so ready. I responded to the women in Lithuania that so many women have already started remotely meditating and anchoring peace for them. The net, like a transmitter, like a radio station, just passes on the frequency, frequency of love, peace, unity, can't disappear. It anchors and it expands. And I invite you to just now really connect to your heart and feel this emission of this frequency. The peace that we are looking for is right here. When we get lost, how to reconnect to this feeling? Net of light, net of light, net of light. 
just this image and the body already has the codes of light and love. It will be felt immediately. We don't even need to put much effort. However, however, I know that many are filled up and really want to serve and to offer the service further. There are ways. At the moment, we are still looking for the best way to support not just Lithuania, Ukraine and Russia, but also other communities in other places where people feel like they're losing balance and they need to feel like shoulders of their sisters and brothers are standing quite close, not far away. Uh, so today I would like just to mention that in Lithuania um, at the moment, um, everybody throughout the day is tuning in remotely and casting, casting the net of light over Russia, over Ukraine, over all the leaders, no duality, no separation, holding everybody on the light. Also, next weekend on the 13th of March, Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern European time. There will be a live meeting in Lithuania and they have asked for anyone who could join us, who could join them remotely in spirit. They would be really, really, really grateful. They already expressed that they feel so held just to know that People in other countries do care and not leaving them alone. It's impossible for us to be left alone. We've gone so far and the unity, the sense of us being together, it will be just going. And I just want you to drop into this knowing. It's not even a sense of trust, belief. It's here with us. It's a deep knowledge of remembering about our beauty, about our power, about how we are lights of the same web, one heart beating together. I've been living in UK for the last 17 years, casting the net of light from here. I've been living in Lithuania. I was born in Russia. And inside, I don't feel like I belong to any of these associations, uh, any of these divisions. I am one with all, and I'm lucky and fortunate to maybe have a glance into these cultures, to be able to speak these languages. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful gift in my life, but I'm here to remind you that we're just one big family. And I thank you for just being here and for connecting to us, because if you're with us, we can't, we can't lose each other. That's it. I really thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. I somehow feel a lot of beauty for all of us uh, through this process. All will be well, thank you. Thank you, Snow. Thank you so much. That was so lovely. <sighs> so, as we take all this in, just think of this, all these beautiful faces here, all these beautiful hearts connected with us, all the people of Russia, of Poland, of Ukraine, of Belarus, of Latvia, of Estonia, of, of uh, Lithuania, all these all these beautiful beings everywhere, our brothers and sisters that we haven't met yet, how much love there is there and how much love there is in us. And we, in this, we also include Vladimir Putin, who is, uh, needs to be held in light so that he remembers who he really is, that he too is a child of God, kin to everyone. So I'm just gonna sing a little bit of Net of Light and we'll come back in again. So just let yourself receive because <clears throat> so much is moving now and so many hearts are opening and yours is one. And as, you, as it opens, there's more room for light to move in. 
Net of light, net of light, floating in the net of light. Net of light, net of light, holding in the net of light. Reaching out, reaching in, reaching through the net of light. Loving all, serving all, holding all within the light. Net of light, net of light, net of love, net of light, net of light, net of light. Our hearts are one within the light. If you uh, would like to be part of this, um, we haven't thought of a great name for it yet, but this Eastern European Support Network, Ed may expand beyond Eastern Europe. Uh, right now, that's the place that's most wounded and in need. So we start there. But if you'd like to be part of that, uh, let us know. You know, write us uh, through the through the website netoflight.org or grandmotherspeak.com. And we'll put you in touch with the women who are heading this up. Snow is one, uh, Linda Vaughn and uh, Lori Brothers. They're, the three of them are holding this together so that everyone can communicate. And as we work, I'm sure more will be uh, uh, revealed and will unfold before us as to the work that needs doing. But the primary, I, I'm going to share what I see as the primary work that needs doing. And then I'm going to ask uh, Catherine and Sinead and Snow if there's any more they want to add to that. For me, the what I see, the primary work that needs doing is to remember, remember who you are at all times. Because when there's something like this war going on and all this carnage and cruelty, it's so shocking that we can get pulled off center by it and go into fear, go into anger, go into revenge fantasies, all sorts of things. But our job is to remember who we are. We are this very powerful beacon of light. We hold light steady so that the earth can feed and take in more and more light and heal. And the earth herself supports us as we do this. And all of nature supports us as we do this. And we are in concert with all levels of light at the same time, with the angelic realms, with the human realms, with the animals, with the uh, plants, uh, with the elemental spirits, with the elements themselves, with everything that lives, with all the ancestors of the light. Right now is tremendous potential for healing and it shows up in a dark form to begin with. But we need to remember Remember who you are. That old song that goes, remind me grandmothers, remind me grandmothers, remind me again who I am. So um, that's what I see as being the most important thing we need to do, at least at this moment. <laughs> so I'd like to ask anybody else to add to that if you have something you wanna say, and if you don't, it's okay. Thanks, Sharon. Um, two things that have really been on my heart and mind, um, and that is, one is the looking into healing the, any war or conflict that may exist within, and working with the Net of Light and calling on the grandmothers to help to heal and resolve any barriers or divisions that we have within ourselves because then we can that that energy that love moves right into the collective macrocosm microcosm and our reactions to such outer world events the automatic default reaction will become one of love rather than 
fear or anger or wanting to work against. So instead, one is going with the working with the flow of love and working with the light of light just more immediately in one's reaction. So that was one thing. And then the, the second thing was um, something that we worked with the other, the other evening in our meeting was sometimes when these great world events can go on, it can be so intimate, intimidating in the sense of overwhelming. So when something gets so overwhelming and you see this, it's a big world and these are big countries and what's happening is really big, to instead visualize the palm of your hand and have the world in the palm of your hand and to call on the net of light and to make that connection with your heart with that piece but it because it looks smaller it's not it's not so it doesn't but the the energy still works it still translates so it's still going to happen so it's a way to work with rather than going into overwhelm or freeze you know which can show up during these times so we just found that that was that's um, a way of working that you one can choose if, if you feel called if it feels right yeah <laughs> Thank you, Sinead. I just, um, yeah, I'd like to add to that a little bit. Um, well, I, I agree with what Sharon said about remembering who we are. And um, I was very touched by Snow's reminder that, um, you know, trauma can really bring up old trauma and, um, and I think what's really helpful with trauma and distress is um, you have to feel like you're in a safe place. And I think that the net of light gives me a sense of safety um, so that I can be that safe place for, for myself and for others. Um, and then the other thing, this is just, um, when this women's center emerged from the relationship between American women and Ukrainian women, um, we, we asked them, well, why, you know, what was it about, you know, the American women going over there that created, you know, this relationship and which ended up, you know, impacting thousands and thousands of people for the better. Um, and they said, you give us hope. They said, you know, at the time that the Soviet Union had just collapsed, they didn't know what they were going to do, where they were going to go. They had lost their pensions, so much support that they were used to. But um, the fact that we had hope and we believed in them. Um, and it's like what Sharon was saying, you know, about remembering who you are. Um, they were somehow able to remember who they were. So like that's, those are my thoughts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Snow, do you wanna add anything more? Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, perhaps just to remind all of us again that when we walk with the net of light, we're really holding all of life, all of the beings, all of the forms. We are not asking for, to take, we're not taking any sides. We're not deciding what is good, who is good, who is bad, because it doesn't work like that. We enclose everything and all the situations and we just let the light come and go travel to the places where it needs to reach. Just a little reminder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think it would be just beautiful if we could end with a song. Does somebody have something you'd like, one of the grandmother's songs you'd like to sing? Hmm. Okay. Like sing, remind me. 
Yeah, go ahead. That's a that's a tough one, but do it. <laughs> Remind me, grandmothers, remind me, grandmothers, remind me again who I am. Remind me, grandmothers, remind me, grandmothers, remind me again who I am. I am Om, I am Om, eternal Om. I am Om, I am Om, eternal Om. In this life of destruction and of illusion, remind me again who I am. In this life of distraction and of illusion, remind me again who I am. I am peace, I am truth, divine bliss. I am peace, I am truth, divine bliss. Remind me, grandmothers, remind me, grandmothers, remind me again. Oh, I Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, every one of you, uh, beautiful souls who are tuning in with us now, who are watching at any time. Take this with you. Let it hold you. Let the grandmothers and the net of light enfold you as you stand steady. And I had a wonderful meditation teacher once who said to me, well, Sharon, don't worry about this. Standing steady just means that when you fall down, you get back up again. So that's all it requires. We're doing good. Love you and see you next month.